Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. You are currently serving a 15-year sentence for armed robbery. Yes, ma'am. My one true love, Annie. Doctors gave her a year. I'm going to beg you to let me out so that I can give Annie the best year of her life. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I know. Reigns, is it? Right. Jimmy Ray. 15 years for picking her own kind of friends. More or less, yeah. Why don't we make that more or less, sir? Yes, sir. No side gig for you. What if I say no? Well, that just make me sad. An honest man like yourself shouldn't have to fight so hard to make ends meet. Oh, Jimmy, a very, very lucky man. We both are. half a million dollars and he never made it home. But if you ever want to share another dance with your lovely woman here, you better come up with my five hundred grand. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. You have pushed a desperate man a little too far here. Temper, temper. You better pray. Nothing happens. Well, you better pray. Nothing happens to his fiance. It takes a certain kind of woman to put up with life like this. I'll be damned. We're going to spend our last year together running around looking over our shoulders all the time. This ends now. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 374. Releasing October 8 in theatres across the US, as well as video on demand and digital, is South of Heaven, a crime thriller that stars Jason Sudeikis as a convicted felon who, after serving 12 years in prison, vows to give his cancer-suffering childhood sweetheart, played by Evangeline Lilly, the best final year of her life only for corrupt and dangerous world to make other plans. Also starring Mike Coulter and Shay Wiggum, South of Heaven marks the long-awaited return of director Aaron Cashelis eight years after his breakthrough movie, Big Bad Wolves. And I'm glad to say joining me now on the podcast is Aaron Cashelis himself. Aaron, I thank you so very much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Matt. It's really interesting reading up just about this movie. It's very much your passion project. And from what I understand, you came up with the idea for the story while on your honeymoon. How does that really pop into your head while a movie like this while you're on a honeymoon, Aaron? Yeah, that's that's a crazy thing to think about while you're on a honeymoon. Uh, actually, I was married at a very lo- a late age. In Israel, it's a very late age of 37. And she was 39. And I was secretly admiring her. She was a TV news anchor lady, and I admire her since I was 18, but it took me almost 20 years uh, to ask her on a date, and it was for the premiere of Big Bad Wolves, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's it's the best test for, you know, a, a, a couple. And, and she came, and then we got engaged, and then we got married, and then we wanted to compensate, I guess, for like 20 years of not being together. When you get married at a very late age of 30-something, almost 40, uh, you want to make up for lost time. You want to make for 20 years of not being together. You want to you want to feel how it was like to be with her at the age of 25, watching a movie you loved, or uh, you know, being in a city in the world that you wanted to be with your loved one. So we got on this very long uh, honeymoon, almost half a year uh, around the world, and all you could feel is that how disproportionate it becomes when you love somebody so much. So during that honeymoon, uh, I thought about making a movie about a guy who goes to prison for 12 years 
and loses the best time he could have with his then fiance, fiance, and now he gets out of prison and she has cancer and he has only uh, one year to give her like 12 years of lost time and all the bad things that you can think about happens to him because my other side of personality always tap into the dark and the brooding and you know as much as i think about love i i'm obsessed with death not in a bad way but i'm just you know uh, i guess i'm neurotic a little bit and i was always uh, I, I always fear death ever since i was a kid so all my tales rabies and big bad wolves and now south of heaven deals with you know death in some ways but this one is like very personal to me because you know uh i've been around cancer and i've been around people who died of cancer and and it's been also in the later during the, the days i wrote the script you know i've been surrounded by cancer so it was like something that i had to deal with like both of the things the great love i had to my wife and the fact i was losing or seeing people uh, getting that horrible disease. While you have that kind of obsession with death, I have an obsession with time. I don't know what it is, maybe because I'm getting older myself. I just turned 40 this year, actually. Um, And time has always been on my mind. And to me, in your movie, time is a central, central theme in it. You know, he's lost 12 years. She has maybe several months to live. How much does time figure in the whole kind of like, evolution of these characters what what's time to them do you think do you think it's a blessing do you think it's a curse what do you think it is to these two characters in your movie i think it's the same i think i i I tapped into a thing i think about time and i i put it in the movie and you're correct to to say that the movie is obsessed with time because uh there i I put clocks for the entire movie and i also Mm. put lots of clocks into the sound design and the music i asked my composer to to work with clocks for the entire movie and the movie even starts the logo for the movie for the you know distribution company starts with a clock so the clock starts ticking as the first frame of the movie comes on because i'm obsessed with that and what i feel about time is that you know when you when you born you're born with a death clock you know you you're basically born to die right the time the clock starts ticking when you're born and that clock says you're gonna die one day and that's what why what how i think about time you know how how i think about bringing kids to the world and what it's how much of a responsibility it is to bring kids to the world and letting them know days after they get into they get their conscious that you know one day they're gonna fade and die and that's what I did with, you know, uh, the writing of uh, South of Heaven, and that's what I did with the characters of Jimmy and Annie. People that need to, uh, they, they usually, they portray time, right? He's like trying to compensate. He, he tries to push time. He tries to, to make time. He tries to uh, compensate, and she, she just understands that there, there is little time, and you need to make the best of it. But you cannot change the ticking of the clock. So those two, you know, uh, um, let's say attitudes towards time and, and you know, the inevitability of living forever is, is there in their, you know, in their romance. And that's, that's what I think creates the big romantic conflict and even the, the harsh things that happens in the movie because there's a guy who doesn't want to let go, a guy who tries to relive the past and, 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 tap into that fantasy that he could capture those lost moments and maybe recreate them. And there's a more realistic entity in the movie that knows that we need to live in in the now and we need to address the fact that I'm fading and, and leaving you. So mm. let's just be here in the now. The role of Jimmy is played by Jason Sudeikis. I love it when actors play against type when they play like unsuspect uh, they play roles that you might not envision them in casting jason in this role you know i i saw on your twitter feed that uh, you told everyone you're taking him for a walk on the dark side um what was it like taking jason into that dark side and did you also always envision a, a, an actor like him a more of a comedic actor to play this role or was that just a, a, a just a case of he was available and he was ready to go and uh, you got him in the movie. Uh, I always like to work with comedians. I did it in Israel twice. And in Big Bulls, I could say that the grandfather who, who, who holds the blowtorch 
is one of Israel's biggest comedians, is like our John Cleese or, you know, Steve Martin. Mm-hmm. Into, so uh, I believe that something very interesting happens when you cast against typecast, when you cast uh, against what everybody thinks should happen. Because when you cast a person that you saw in an action film to an action film, you'll get the same thing. You know, it'll be a tougher uh, performance or uh, uh, even tougher performance. But th- that's the arc. That's how you're going to play it. Once you take a, a comedian, which I always love to see in American movies like the stuff... Uh, Robin Williams did uh, his dramatic roles were amazing. So for me, when you go with a comedian, they have the best timing as actors, and and they have a, a strong sense of vulnerability to their uh, to their characters because they're very vulnerable human beings. Comedians they have a they have like most comedians are dark in nature, the best ones, and most comedian good comedians have a tendency to be very sad inside. And I don't know if uh, Jason was sad or is sad, but there is a sadness to him when you see him in, you know, in, in not when he's doing, you know, his comedy. So once I watch his tapes, I, I, I noticed that he has those great eyes, those big puppy eyes. Mm. And I needed I knew I needed in this movie to tap into a, 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 an actor that you will feel sympathy towards or empathy throughout the movie because he he's starting like a guy that you want to love and you want to root for him. But then, you know, by, you know, second act and third act, things starting to evolve and taking on a very dark turn. And I didn't want the, the viewer to lose his empathy towards this guy. So I knew I had to find an actor that has vulnerability has uh, has charm has a down to earth kind of uh, persona that everybody would love to hug back then i didn't know it's going to be ted lasso so now it's even you know his ted lasso persona is into is built into this movie but back then i just thought he was very likable and a very uh great uh, emotional uh, actor and the other thing i noticed about jason is in a movie called colossal yeah with anne hathaway is that he could be, he could do brooding he he could do he could do dark he could he could be very menacing and i thought that it would be a great thing to take all of this stuff that you see in jason sudeikis and just work for the entire film with all the spectrum that he could give you as an actor and luckily jason at the same time he was not doing ted lasso yet and he was looking for a movie that will broaden his horizon as an actor and will show that he has a dramatic side and it will show that he has a darker side and he could do practically just about anything you could ask of him as an actor to do and when he read the script he was looking for this kind of script and when he read the script he just you know uh, said i want to do it he was very much in love with the script and you know we had a great couple of first conversations meetings and we just you know hit it off and knew that it's gonna work the matt's movie reviews podcast is brought to you by 80s tees 80s Tees is an online retailer of licensed t-shirts and pop culture gear from your favorite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, comic books, and musicians. Celebrate your inner 80s nerd and click on the link in the show notes below to get the raddest retro t-shirts delivered to your door. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Loot Crate. Founded in 2012, Loot Crate is the worldwide leader in fan subscription boxes. Loot Crate partners with industry leaders in entertainment, gaming, sports, and pop culture to deliver monthly themed crates, produce interactive experiences in digital content, and film original video productions. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Crate has a subscription box for you. To get your very own exclusive collectibles, apparel, and gear delivered to your door, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is also brought to you by Voodoo. Watch the latest movies and TV shows anytime, anywhere. No subscriptions, no contract. Enjoy stunning quality in up to 4K ultra high definition at home and download and watch on your mobile device as well. To rent and buy from over 100,000 titles or watch thousands of movies free with Voodoo Movies on us, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. Now, back to the show.
South of Heaven is very much a passion project for you. And ever since Big Bad Wolves, you had such great buzz around that film and so many people coming out there talking about it, Tarantino, et cetera. Um, you know, you, you, you try to get some projects off the ground. It didn't work out. But this one is coming out. It's going to happen. People are watching that as, as of next week. Um, there's going to be a premiere, I think, um, this week as well. Um, what's it like for you to know that people are going to be watching this film that you've been working on for so long that has such a personal connection to you, but also a film that, you know, you haven't had anything on screen as a director for quite some time to be able to have people watch your stuff, especially now now they're going back in cinemas as well, which I think is a really important point because if this was released, like, say, six months ago to a year ago, it would have just been digital. Now people are going to watch it in the cinema where it needs to be seen. It's going to be your first film in quite a while. How does it feel that that's going to happen and people are going to watch it? I think, like, I have to say you you always fear the worst if you're an erotic guy from Israel. Uh, but for me, the most important thing I wanted to, you know, to deliver after eight years is that if you wait so long, and I have to say, I, I, I did stuff, I wrote stuff, and like you said, it came and fell apart, and fell apart, but when you come back after so many years, I, I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm coming back with something I totally believe in, in its morals, in its ideas, in, you know, in, in its cast, and that's something that you just do for your, you know, money. I did the most personal thing I could do within the, you know, the American system. It's an indie film, uh, and I wanted to just say, look, if I'm traveling from Israel to the U.S. to make a first American movie, I don't want to make, you know, a remake or a sequel or something that's not going to show whatever made people fall in love with either rabies or big bedrooms. I have to mm. stay true to my own colors. I have to stay true to the fans that, you know, wanted me to continue making movies. I wanted to show a, a natural progression from big bad wolves into the U S and that means for me, it meant bringing my sensibility, my point of view of, of how I would have re- deconstruct uh, an American genre, right? So when people see it, they will say, okay, we could see that the guy who did Big Bad Wolves did indeed direct and wrote this movie. And, you know, for me, if people go out of the theater watching it and say, well, it was worth waiting, you know, eight years to see somebody uh, gives you something, something from his heart, you know? I always love when directors, even you know the bigger directors, the, be- the best directors, does go and do something from their heart, even if it's like you know uh, something small as punch drunk love. You know, if you compare it to you know there will be blood or or even uh, boogie nights, mm. just you know a, a, some glimpse of how a, a, a small film from Pity Anderson will look like, or how, you know how a small personal, more personal film from Steven Spielberg will look like. So for me, it's like here it is. Here's a piece of my heart. I hope you like it, and you know I have, and it it, it was done with the best of intentions, and 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 a loving to the American genres and the Texas noir and westerns and. You know, I just want people to have a great time and maybe think about days where, you know, you see these kind of movies back in the 70s and some movies were made even in the 90s. And if so, I could get that feeling, that would be a, a, a victory for me. So for everyone out there listening, October 8, in theaters across the U.S., as well as video on demand and digital, South of Heaven, starring Jason Sudeikis and Evangeline Lilly, as well as Shea Wigan, Mike Coulter, Michael Pare as well, great cast. Great movie, great director. Um, Aaron, I thank you so very much. Congratulations with the movie. um, Best of luck with the upcoming premiere and release. And thank you so very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for having me and all these wonderful questions, man. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.